So here you are, six minutes from Ray, our village hosts of village hosts. <laughs> Hi. Um, Barbara's actually asked me to do this in previous years, and I felt like it would have been a bit weird because I had absolutely no idea what I was doing here, and I didn't think that would be a terribly inspiring testimony. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> But, but this year, it seemed like finally everything was starting to make sense and uh, seemed to be slightly running related. And I thought, aha, this is the time, clearly, for me to, to talk to you all. And then I slept through it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> But a uh, little bit of background on me. I'm Ray. I'm from Trinity. I've been hanging out around there for about seven years now. Um, before that, I, I'm British, as you may have guessed. Uh, I grew up in the Methodist church, being kind of actively involved in all the youth stuff. I was the youth rep on council. I went to MAYC weekends. I was, I've always been quite confident in my identity as a Christian. And also when I was about five and realized I couldn't act, I decided that I wanted to be a lawyer. Yet somehow I've managed to sort of bimble my way through most of my life, not quite achieving either of those things terribly well. So I went off to law, to university to do law, and actually started out doing politics instead, because I, I don't really know why at the time it seemed like a good idea. And I sort of graduated and ended up working in a shop for a while, and then finally got into the civil service. And what I really wanted to do was human rights, but I ended up working in data protection. And it's just, <laughs> in, in lots of ways, I was kind of thinking, well, this is, this is clearly what I'm supposed to do, it makes sense. And then it didn't work out for things that were beyond my control. And I ended up doing something else out of necessity or expedience and just sort of bimbling, floating along. Uh, seven years ago, we, we moved out here. And I thought, oh, great, the Netherlands. There's, there's the Hague. It's near Brussels. There's going to be lots of opportunities for me to apply for jobs in organizations that do the kind of work that I really believe in. So I started doing that and got absolutely nowhere and ended up working in a call center helping people fix printers which was awful, by the way, don't do that. If, if you're ever like stuck for a job, do not work in a call center helping people fix printers, it's soul crushing. And uh, kind of the first time I came to what was then New Wine and would become this wonderful live stream, I'd just quit that terrible job and I'd had an interview with Amnesty International. And I was like, this is, this is clearly it, finally, it's all gonna get going. And while I was at the conference, I had, I received some clear kind of messages and affirmations that, uh, you know, that God was preparing me still, and you know, that uh, I had to do the, the assignments. I'd started doing a master's in law for fun uh, to fill my time. And then while I was at the conference, I found out that I hadn't got the job. And I was like, really? I mean, come on, that was, that was an obvious one. How do I keep getting this so wrong, figuring out what I'm supposed to be doing? And then some more time passed, and I kind of, I took up running and uh, various other sports -ing things to fill my time and just kept, kept going for things that seemed like they were going to be the thing that made the, you know, this is finally what it was all leading up to. And then it wasn't. And then finally in February, I saw a little job that shouldn't really have come up in any of the searches that I normally put into job engines. It was office manager for a little techie startup company that make um, smart insoles for runners. And if you want to know more about that, do talk to me and I'll sell you one. But uh, it was this role that kind of looked on surface uninspiring, but I thought, hey, it's a job. I'm unemployed, it's better than nothing. I went for it, and it turned out that actually they needed someone with exactly my random mixture of previous experiences in sales and in data protection and in applying for things. And <laughs> <laughs> massive part of my job now is just applying for things, and I've done a lot of that. So, yeah, and I was like, oh, oh, of course. I never would have thought of this. Thankfully, there is someone up there with a far better idea and imagination than me. And he's put me in exactly this place. And I've been really, really enjoying it. The guys I work with are lovely. They're mostly Dutch, but they're also kind of sci uh, sports scientists, engineers, and programmers who aren't terribly interested in the God stuff. And I kind of, I tricked them into thinking that I was, well, not normal, but, you know, like approachable. And then <laughs> after a few weeks, I said, oh, I'm, I'm off on holiday. Where are you going? Church camp. Really? You? Yeah, yeah, no, I do that. I, um, I, I like God. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then they started asking me all these questions. And the, the one guy in particular I talked to who, I didn't know this until we became Facebook friends, but it seems that he likes to share kind of uh, atheist memes. And I think normally if he met a, a God botherer, he would start initially on the kind of the Dawkins path, 
But he, I tricked him. So he kind of felt he couldn't do that to me because he already liked me. And <laughs> so he, just, he asked me more genuine questions. Like, well, so, you know, what do you think the point of religion is? And I said, well, the point of religion is clearly social control. And he's like, ah, so you admit it? I'm like, yes, religion's a terrible man-made thing that we have constructed around the beautiful thing of faith. And the point of faith is that we are human, there's something beyond the purely practical, and we recognize the truth and the beauty of the universe, and we want to commune with our creator. And he went, huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then another one said, hey, is it really necessary for you to go to church camp? And I'm like, well, you know, maybe not for God. I think he'd be fine, he's God, but it's very necessary for me. So, yeah, and in the past kind of week or so, some things have happened that have thrown all that into doubt, and I don't really know what's coming next, but it's really reaffirmed my confidence that God does have a plan that's so much better than I could come up with on my own, and I'm now ready to run with whatever it is when it reveals itself.